<laughs> so yes, yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but it's a um, it's been a really interesting time. Of this massive social experiment, and I don't know about you, but I learned a few things about myself. I learned a few things about what's actually important to me. You know, I learned a lot, of, a lot of things around my team, and you know why why we do what we do. Because you know, we left here and you know back home our practice. We'd had a really really good February. I flew back, we started March amazingly well. I'm going, we're killing it. Then all of a sudden, this bug showed up and we just fell off a cliff. And it was challenging. You know, there's, you know, we talk about the buckets of emotion, sad, mad, glad, scared. I was having all of those regularly, just up and down, up and down, up and down. And the uncertainty of that period was like nothing I've ever experienced, I'm sure the same view. And as business owners, it was terrifying because, you know, we've got people who depend on us. And, you know, I remember like April was, yeah, it was awful. You know, we, um, over there, look, we didn't actually fully close, but there was a lot of blood in the streets. People were just letting people go. Businesses were shutting and I hadn't actually um, let anyone go. And I was doing everything in my power not to. Because I just went, it's just what a terrible situation to be in. And it, I struggled for a long time thinking, when I got into business, this isn't how it's meant to be. I never thought for a second that I'd be you know, watching all the money that we'd accumulate just leave. You know, have the prospect of sacking someone and saying, hey, I don't know what you're going to do, but I can't keep you around. And that was pretty shitty. And I remember driving to the Gold Coast and... I'd already had a couple of pretty uncomfortable situations with people saying, this is probably what's ahead of us. And a friend messaged me and said, Prime Minister's coming on to do an, annou uh, do an announcement. And anyway, Scott Morrison came on and he, an he announced a program called JobKeeper, which allowed employees in Australia to have this subsidy to keep our employees on. And there's also the, um, there's another one, I can't even think of the other one was, if people did go, go they got an allowance as well. I remember driving and crying, going, oh, fuck, I don't have to fire people. And I called one of the girls who um, I'd had a difficult conversation with her, and I said, don't pack your bags, we're going to be right. And that was a really, really cool day. But it made me then step back and go, what's actually really important to what we do is the people. The money we can always get back. You know, and the beauty of healthcare like, you know, what an industry for us to, be, to have been in. Imagine if you're in bars, clubs, cafes, restaurants. You know, healthcare is resilient. And if, if this period has shown anything is, you know, I believe people are starting to value healthcare more and value their health more than ever, which is an amazing spot for us to be in. But it's one of those things where you look at why we do what we do and it's for the people and with our patients, like even when you guys got shut down, there were severe restrictions I talk to people in practices back home because we're still having lockdowns and that sort of thing. We're just coming out of it. And people are freaking out because they're not busy and the money's not there and the patients aren't there. I said, yeah, but they're coming back. We've had floods as well this year, so we've had a bit going on. But you know, farms that get washed away with floods, they lose every fence, all their livestock, all their sheds. That's years and years and years to come back if they come back. Just before, the, uh, before COVID last, or two years ago, we had bushfires down in Canberra and uh, Victoria. So these poor people just got through a bushfire, which again destroys everything, and then they went straight into COVID. So even though we've you know, had times where we couldn't be running at full capacity, etc., the patients still come, and they'll still come. And so it was during that period that, you know, when we looked at, I looked at the industry that we're in, and I thought, we're in the right spot. We're in a really good place. And... It made me then reflect on kind of my role in all of that. And it was to provide leadership. You know, leadership to our team. Leadership to our patients, because people are coming in scared. Leadership with referrers, leadership to community. And I learned quite, quite a few valuable lessons about leadership during that time. And write this down. This could be the most important thing I'm going to say. <laughs> Leadership is providing certainty when there is none. 
Leadership is providing certainty when there is none. And I heard that and I went, wow, how cool. Now, it's pretty difficult to provide certainty when there's things outside our influence that can shut down businesses, right? That can take lives, etc. But I took that to mean we're going to provide a level of certainty to our teams. And my approach was, I don't know how, but we're going to find a way. I think is when we're in leadership, it's about showing resilience and we don't give up. And I was absolute on that. No matter what happens, we will find a way. Beg, borrow, steal, we'll get out of this. Because that was a really important thing. Another lesson I learned around leadership, this is important too, write this one down too. Not as important as the first one, but it's up there. Leadership is about being visible. Leadership is about being visible. And my lesson around this was during those you know, challenging times of the first bit of COVID, you know, I had a lot of personal things going on as well and I was trying to juggle everything and so I had the responsibility of my teams, then all my clients and trying to pick everyone up and provide certainty and all this. But there were times where I just kind of, I found a little heap. You know, I remember it was one day, I was in a coaching week it was a Tuesday, and I, don't, I had a bunch of calls, and I was feeling fine. Then I got to about lunchtime, had a little break, and I just kind of lied down on the couch, and I couldn't get up. I was out. I had to reschedule my calls, and my tank was kind of empty. And during that period, I realised that you just can't keep going. But also, too, when it comes to the leadership piece, is being able to show up when you need to show up. With my team, when things got a little bit tight, hard and you know, tiresome at times, I felt myself for pull back a bit. And sometimes I wasn't at the practice as probably often as I should, probably should have been. And that had a really massive effect on everyone. And I've seen that with quite a few businesses that I've worked with, where leadership steps out of the business to focus on other things, and the kids are left at home by themselves. All they want is to know mum and dad are there at this, and that they're safe. And they, again, it's through these things, like, what, what were my lessons, what were my learnings? And Simon Sinek said it beautifully the other day. What did he say? I can't remember right now. He basically said, you know, your clients are people. Your employees and your team are people. Your suppliers, your referrers are people. So unless you understand people, you're not in business. And that's been the really profound thing. And you know, we will spend these couple of days looking at stuff in zero looking at profit and loss and cash flows and balance sheets and KPI dashboards, talking about rebooking rates and cancellation, no, rebook, did not show, et cetera, et cetera. But they're just a scoreboard. It's the working and helping and influencing and enabling people that makes all that stuff work. A lot of cool stuff came out of COVID as well. Don't you reckon? A lot of cool stuff. You know, I've just noticed in society back home, I think hygiene's on the up. Yeah, a lot more people are kind of covering their nose and washing their hands, giving us a little bit of space. There's some good stuff that came out of it. You know, it highlighted, you know, rightly or wrongly, the ability to communicate people virtually. And in your own business, like, did you find that you made subtle changes in how you did things, things that you wouldn't have done otherwise? Like, and certainly for the hive, it's been a massive period of change for us. You know, during that time where you know, we went, well, if people are going to really struggle, how can we help? You know, so we basically said, look, we'd rather keep working with people and trying to support people as we can during this time. So we dropped our pants, dropped the fees, and took a hit. Went, this is for the long game. This is when people really need us most. And it was during that period, too, we had to look at our model. We couldn't do live events anymore. That'll kill a model pretty quick. And it was during that time that Blake brought to fruition, he and I had discussed over many cups of tea over the years, and Blake basically created Optimus. You know, we kind of shared with an idea here or there, but Blake worked tirelessly to create something that's, I think, amazing. Amazing. And so it's something that we could help people without doing events. It was kind of like the how-to guide. And even now, it's an amazing resource, coaching. Because when someone asks me a question about meetings, I go, cool, go to Optimus. You know, someone asks me about something with culture, go to Optimus. 
It's a resource we can come back to. And even going back to it now, I firmly believe if you go through that thing and actually do it, you're going to have a kick-ass business. What we do is not hard. It's really not hard. And so that came out of it. And so, Blake, you're a legend. Amazing, amazing resource. And then, yeah, mate, I'm Troy. Sorry, mate. That's OK. Where'd you come up? I'm out from Australia. What's your excuse? <laughs> And it's in this time too, like Katie joined us, Amy joined us, and the Hive got a new feel about it. You know, some of the, some of the you know, people who have come through Optimus have kind of jo joined the group now. And so it's over these couple of days you want to, you know, this is your event. We've got a bit of an idea. We made some notes. We wrote some stuff out, the things that we wanted, we'd like to cover. But also too, I'd like to, you know, uncover what, what would you like to achieve, or what was an outcome you'd like for these two days? You go, oh, that was really, that was worth my time. That was great. And so we're going to, we'll, we're going to come back to that. But just have a bit of a think about what do you want to take from this? Yeah? Because that's my outcome. So help you meet your outcome. So what I'd like you to do now is just take a couple of minutes with the person next to you and just jot down a couple of notes. What did you learn of this hot minute that we've had since we saw each other last? <laughs> 